You know what I think, though? It's that this time, I was like, I don't give a shit about anything else. I just want to make the music that's making me happy and that I love. So, it has now been almost a month since Nicki Minaj has released her highly anticipated fifth album, Pink Friday 2, and I think it's time to actually talk about this album. Upon Pink Friday 2's initial release, the reaction online was fairly split. I saw a lot of people talking about it highly, saying they love the girly and fun vibe of the album. I saw quite a bit of people completely dismissing the album due to the use of samples or its quote-unquote lackluster features. But personally, what I saw the most were people jumping to conclusions. So after giving the album some listen-throughs more thoroughly and allowing myself to fully indulge in this album and its contents, I think I am personally ready to talk about this motherfucking album. Now my personal opinion on Pink Friday 2 is... It's a good album. Is it her best project? No, I wouldn't say that. But the carefree, fun, feminine vibe we get from the album is generally enjoyable. And it's a brush of fresh air compared to several of the hypersexual songs that have grown in popularity within the female rap genre lately. I think with Nicki now being a wife and mother, she can provide us with a new perspective on relationships and womanhood. Songs like R&B and Let Me Calm Down with J. Cole really show you where Nicki's head's at within her relationships and personal life. Um, which honestly is a nice change from the I don't need a man type of vibe that's been real popular lately. Before I share my final thoughts on this album, I know there's been a lot of uh, criticism for this album made online, and I feel a lot of it is a little argu- arguable. So before I share my final thoughts, I want to take a minute to rapid fire re- rebut some of these. One, the album is heavily sampled. It's 2023. Every song is heavily sampled. Two, she disses other rap girls on it. It's rap. That's what people do. Do they not diss her on their songs as well? Three. The album doesn't feel like a sequel to the first Pink Friday. It's been 13 years since the first album was released. Nikki has grown and matured. Four. I think Pink Friday had more pop elements. We wanted pop Nikki back. Pop music does not sound the same as it did in 2010. Billie Eilish in 2023 does not sound like Natasha Bedingfield in 2010. And finally, five. The album sounds rushed. First of all, actually, I can't defend her here. I got it. Yes. I'm keeping up. Yes. But some of these new records are not done. <laughs> no. Well, no. Okay. Okay. So it's really only. <laughs> Overall, Pink Friday 2 does not deserve half of the hate it has gotten since its initial release. It is a solid body of work, and it truly shows us where Nikki is within her current headspace. I think this album was truly needed within Nikki's discography. It shows us her versatility as an artist is still strong. It shows us Nikki's vulnerability, which we haven't seen in great depth since the pink print. And most importantly, this album shows us Nikki's growth, not only as an artist, but as a human. The album has a crazy replay value, and it honestly sounds better the more you listen to it. There's several potential hit songs, from the instant hit Everybody to Pink Friday Girls, which could easily dominate in the summertime. This album has it all. With Pink Friday 2, we get a front row seat to everything in Nikki's world, from her relationships to her status within her career, her experience as a mother, dealing with the grief of her father. Nikki gives us a full circle perspective of what it's like to be Nikki Minaj. With Pink Friday 2, we get a full perspective of who Nikki Minaj is as a human being.